Sup, dude. I feel like nobody really talks about Dominique Wilkins, and that confuses me because, oh my god, that dude was a monster. Standing at 6 foot 8, 230 pounds with a 42 inch vertical, Neek was one of the most vicious dunkers the league has ever seen. His highlights genuinely make blood rush to my penis. My favorite highlight of his has to be the one where he punches it on Larry Bird and makes him sit like a good boy. I love Larry Bird, but I also hate him because he's a major reason Neek isn't ranked higher all time. But I'll get to that in a sec. Right now, now let's start from the beginning. In the 1982 draft, the Utah Jazz picked Dominique Wilkins with the third overall pick, but Neek refused to play for Utah because he wanted to be an Atlanta Hawk. He wanted to play in Atlanta so bad because he went to college just down the road in Athens. So the Jazz ended up trading him to the Hawks in exchange for Freeman Williams, John Drew, and a million dollars. This ended up being one of the most lopsided trades in NBA history because John and Freeman only played a combined four seasons with the Jazz, meanwhile Neek has a statue outside State Farm. Arena. In his rookie year, he started all 82 games playing about 33 minutes a night. In those 33 minutes, he averaged 17 and a half points, shooting nearly 50% from the field, making the all-rookie team as well as the playoffs. In the playoffs, Neek had his first of many postseason encounters with the Hick from French Lick. In game one, Neek played well, scoring an efficient 21 points, but they lost 103 to 95. Then in game two, he was a lot less efficient, scoring 18, but they ended up winning 95 to 93. Because this was back in the olden days they only played three games in the first round and in that third game Neek shit the bed scoring eight points turning the ball over five times and they lost by almost 20 thus concluding his rookie year in the season after he upped his scoring to 21.6 then jumped up to 27.4 in year three and then by his fourth year he led the entire league in scoring with just over 30 points per game in that fourth year the Hawks finished with 50 wins and were matched up against Detroit in the first round Neek went nuclear in that series dropping a 50 bomb in game two and 38 in game four. They breezed by Detroit winning the series three to one and moved on to the second round. It was in the second round where Neek would face off against Larry Bird once more. Through the first two games, Neek played terrible, averaging 16 points, shooting below 30% from the field. The Hawks lost both of these games and were down 0-2 in the series. Then in games three and four, Neek flipped the switch and had two games where he scored nearly 40 points. Sadly, they only won one of those games, putting them down three to one in the series. Boston and then molested Atlanta in game six and went on to win it all. Fast forward to 1988, Neek participated in his second dunk contest facing off against Michael Jordan. Back in 1985, he beat Mike, so this was his chance to get a second victory over number 23. Only problem was, it was rigged. The contest was held in Chicago, making it virtually impossible for Neek to win. This became apparent in the final round when they went head to head. For each of their first dunks, they both got a 50. Then in round two, Neek got a 50. Meanwhile, Jordan was given a 40. Seven. The people of Chicago's panties were in a twist, so they let the judges hear it. Then suspiciously in the final round, they gave Nico 45 on a dunk that I think pretty much everyone agrees deserved a higher score. Mike then ran the length of the floor, jumped from the free throw line, and missed. He managed to dunk it on his second try, but very suspiciously received a perfect score and won the contest. Even Jordan admitted to Neek that he probably shouldn't have won, but said they were in Chicago, so what can you do? After getting fucked over, Neek finished out the 1988 season averaging a career high 30.7 points per game leading the Hawks to the playoffs yet again. The first round was tight but Neek clutched out in game 5 scoring 33 points leading them to the second round. The team they were facing in round 2 was none other than Larry Bird's Celtics. This third and final meeting between Neek and Bird was one for the ages. The Celtics jumped out to a 2-0 series lead but the Hawks rallied and won 3 straight giving them the 3-2 advantage. Then in game 6 Neek dropped 35 but the Hawks fell short by just 2 points. This forced Atlanta to travel back to Boston for Game 7. At the start of the fourth, Neek already had 31 points and the Celtics led by just two. The lead had changed hands 22 times. It was anyone's ball game. Neek and Larry knew this, so they left it all on the court. The two went bucket for bucket, draining everything in sight. They were unconscious. It was one of the greatest duels in NBA history. Sadly though, the hit came out on top, spoiling Neek's near 50 point performance. In the years after that series, Neek continued his personal dominance, but the Hawks as a team were simply just not built for the playoffs. In 89, they lost in the first round of the Bucks. then in 1990, they didn't even make the playoffs, and in 91, they lost in the first round of Detroit. Then in 1992, something terrible happened. Neek ruptured his Achilles and missed the rest of the season. Miraculously, though, he returned the following year like he never got hurt and averaged almost 30 a game. But then the Hawks traded him in the middle of the season in exchange for a younger Danny Manning. Neek played 25 games with the Clippers and looked like his normal self, but after that, 
met, his decline was fast and eventually he became a journeyman moving from team to team. He even played in Greece winning a bunch of awards including a championship and finals MVP. Although Neek couldn't make it very far in the postseason, I think we can all agree he was sick as fuck and deserves a lot of respect. You know who else deserves a lot of respect? Ron Artest. The guy was a bit of a goofball but was undoubtedly a winner. You can click here to watch the video I made about him. Thanks for watching this one. Bye dude.